for fertilization to occur, both an egg and sperm must combine. During intercourse, ejaculation of semen allows sperm a protective environment to enter the uterus, then self-propel themselves to the uterine tubes. The release of oxytocin during the female orgasm may facilitate sperm migration. Once the egg has been ovulated, it must be fertilized within 24 hours or the egg is no longer viable. However, sperm may survive up to four days, so fertilization may occur even if the woman had sex three to four days before ovulation. The most common place for fertilization to occur is the ampulla of the uterine tube. Once the head of a single sperm cell penetrates the egg, the zona pellucida undergoes changes so no more sperm can enter. If more than one sperm enters, the process is aborted and will not become fertilized. The 23 chromosomes from the sperm combine with the 23 chromosomes in the egg nucleus to complete meiosis II and form a 46 chromosome zygote. One of the 23 pairs of chromosome sets determine the sex. The egg always contributes an X chromosome to the zygote. However, sperm may either have an X or a Y chromosome. A zygote with an X chromosome from the mother and an X chromosome from the father, or XX, is a girl. A zygote with a Y chromosome from the father, or XY, is a boy. Once the egg and sperm combine, the cell becomes a zygote. The zygote immediately begins cleavage, or mitotic cell division, exponentially increasing the number of cells to form a cluster called a marola. A marola is a berry that appears like a raspberry but is solid in the center. The most important point with development of the pre-embryo, i.e. before implantation in the first five to seven days, is that the rapidly increasing number of cells without corresponding increase in size. Simply, the size of the pre-embryonic ball of cells after five days is no bigger than the ovulated egg out of the ovary. This is important because this prevents the ball of cells from getting stuck in the uterine tube. Days five to seven are the formation of the blastocyst. The size of the blastocyst is the same as the Roosevelt's eye on a dime. The blastocyst is characterized as a ball of cells within a fluid-filled cavity. The inner cell mass, called the embryoblast, will become the baby, while the surrounding cells is called the trophoblast. It has to be at this stage in order for implantation to occur within the endometrium. Here we can see an animation of the fertilization process just after ovulation. Day zero is when the sperm and egg combine to form a zygote. This is followed by rapid cell division as the cell mass travels down the fallopian tube assisted by cilia lining the fallopian tube, like a conveyor belt. Along the end of the tube, it is a blastocyst and ready for implantation into the endometrium. The surrounding cells of the blastocyst, called the trophoblast, will attach to the endometrium and form all the extra embryonic membranes such as the chorion, placenta, and others that will support the baby during the uterine development, but not actually become a part of the baby itself. The trophoblast also serves to maintain progesterone production from the corpus luteum in the ovary. The trophoblast secretes the hormone human chorionic gonadotropin in the mother's circulatory system, which targets the ovary, preventing the corpus luteum from disintegrating on day 14, but allowing it to secrete progesterone for about 10 more weeks. This hormone, human chorionic gonadotropin hormone, is also the hormone that is excreted into the urine of the mother after implantation that is detected on a pregnancy test or in a blood sample. Progesterone serves to maintain the nutrient secretions of the secretory endometrium until the embryo has formed the placenta. Once implantation takes place, germ layer formation begins. Germ layers are the basis of all body components. This occurs at the end of the second week and marks the beginning of the embryonic stage. The germ layers are like three pancakes stacked on top of each other. The germ layers start to curl inward, forming a tube wrapped in the three layers. The inner tube is the endoderm, which becomes the GI tract and surrounding organs. The top of the tube will become the mouth, which goes back to the anus. The next layer, the mesoderm, which will form the musculoskeletal system, reproductive organs, and connective tissues. The outermost layer is the ectoderm 
which is the entire nervous system plus a few other things like epidermis and sensory organs. The top of this tube will become the brain, with the spinal cord and peripheral nerves extending from that. The development of the ectoderm is critical in the first few weeks and is the whole reason for folic acid in prenatal vitamins. The placenta has the mother side and the chorion is on the baby side. The blood does not mix but travels close to each other allowing optimal diffusion of waste and allowing absorptions of oxygen and nutrients by the baby. There are many hormones produced by the placenta Progesterone increases dramatically. The name progesterone is progestation. Human chorionic gonadotropin promotes progesterone production by the corpus luteum and prevents rejection of the embryo by the mother's immune system. Placental hormones facilitate breast development in preparation for lactation. Other placental hormones work with the mother's growth hormone to produce a diabetes-like effect on the mother's body to spare glucose and lipids for the baby. Increased mother lipolysis and blood fatty acid concentration decreases the mother's glucose utilization, increasing blood glucose levels with polyuria, causing some dehydration and thirst. Relaxin serves to loosen connective tissue, particularly in the pelvic girdle, so that the weight of the baby in the third trimester can expand the pelvic diameter, i.e. widen her hips. In addition, relaxin also minimizes the contractility of the myometrium during the growth and development stages. The extra embryonic membranes include the yolk sac, which helps to form some organ systems and contribute to early blood production. The amnion is a sac immediately around the embryo. This sac cushions the embryo while also allowing for movement. The allantosis is a stalk that connects the embryo to the placenta, which aids in the removal of waste from the baby and the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The chorion is the baby side of the placenta and entirely surrounds the baby. As the baby grows, the amnion immediately surrounding it fuses with the chorion. The vascular projections of the chorionic villi are what interfaces with the maternal blood supply for nutrient, gas, and waste exchange. The umbilical cord is a vascular connection between the embryo and the placenta. Development of the umbilical cord occurs between weeks 3 to 8 as the yolk sac shrinks. The umbilical cord is made up of two arteries that travel away from the baby to the placenta carrying deoxygenated blood. One umbilical vein brings oxygenated blood back to the baby and travels to the liver for filtering before any other organ. The vein is shorter than the two arteries, which causes these twists in the cord.